Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we'll be talking about dictionary. So dictionary is an unordered index and mutable data type consists of key and value pairs. And it is one of the most important data type that you'll be using in your Python programming. So without further ado, let's get into this. So as I mentioned in the introduction, dictionary is a mutable data type just like a list, but it is a bit different from the list in a sense that a single element in a dictionary is consists of key and value pair. So let's first create a dictionary here. So the first way to create a dictionary is to create a variable and set that equal to a curly braces. So this means that the dict1 variable will hold the dictionary data type. So I can check that by calling the type statement type dict1 and then if I run it you will see a class dictionary here and the second method is to call the dictionary class directly so I can also do dict1 and dict and instantiate it and if I just check the type one more time and run it you will see a class dictionary here as well so now we have our dictionary here, let's talk about key value pair. So as the name says it, key value pair is consists of key and value separated by a colon. So for example, I can have a key of a name, colon, and a value of Danny. So we can consider this key value pair as an element in the dictionary. So if I just cut this uh, key value pair and then paste it inside the curly braces and print the dict1 and run it. So then you will see a class dictionary from this print statement and also you will see one element in this dictionary with a key of a name and value of a Danny. So now let me talk about some of the characteristics about the key. So the key in dictionary always have to be unique. So the first rule is that key should be unique. So for example, we have a dict1 here with a key of a name and value of Danny. So if I just copy this element as is and then make it as a second element, and then if I try to print this, dict1 and then run it, you will only see a single element coming out even though we have a two elements in the dictionary. And the reason why this is happening is because Python is automatically filtering out the duplicate keys so that it just filtered out the first portion and it only printed out the second portion. So if I put a different key here like name x, and then just run this one more time and you will be able to see two elements the first one is name and then the second element has a key of name x and the second rule about the key is that you can only use immutable data type as a key so we can say only immutable data type can be used as a key so we have learned in the previous video that the immutable data type is string int float boolean as well as tuple and the mutable data type is list and dictionary. So let me show you an example of using the immutable data type as a key. So let me create a dict1 and then I can use a string. So name colon Danny. And if I just print the dict1 out, run it, then you will see a name as a key and value as a Danny. So this works. And let's also try tuple. So I can do dict1, set it equal to curly braces, parenthesis, name comma name. So we have a two elements in the tuple, name and name, colon, and set the value as a Danny. And then if I just print this dict1 one, one more time, then you will see a name and name as a key. So the tuple as is is the key and value as a Danny. So this works as well. And we can also try to use an integer. So we can do dict1, curly braces, zero, colon, Danny, and then print dict1 and run it and this works as well as you can see. So then let me try to use a list as a key. So I can do dict1 equal curly braces list and then set it as a name comma name. So we have two elements in the list and if I print dict1 and run it and you will see a type error saying that unhashable type list. So what this means is that the Python doesn't allow you to use the mutable data type as the key because the mutable data type can be changed within your program. Okay, so now let's talk about the value. So value can be duplicated within a single dictionary. So I can have a dict1 like this and have a key of name and value of Danny and also have another key of another name and have a value of a Danny as well. And if I print a dict1, it will print out two different elements within a single dictionary with the same value of Danny here. And also just like list and tuple, you can put various different data type into the dictionary value. So we can do dict1 and have a name and have a list here and put multiple different names here. So I can put Danny, Paul, and Eddie here. And then if I just print dict1, then you will see a single element in this dictionary with a key of a name and value of a list that contains three different names. And we can also put a tuple as the value. So dict1, 
name and tuple. Let me just copy and paste this value. And then if I just print the same thing, then you will see a key of name and a tuple that contains three different names. And you can also have a dictionary within a dictionary. So I can do dict one uh, key of name and another dictionary here and say like first name equals to Danny and last name equals to uh, O. And then if I just print dict one, then you will see a single element within this dictionary with a key of a name and value of another dictionary that has a key of a first name and value of Danny and also a second element with a key of a last name and value of O. Okay, so now we've talked about the key and value. Let's talk about how we can access a value of an element using the key. So I have a dictionary created here for you. It contains two different elements. The first element has the key of individuals and it has a value of this list. And in the list, we have a two different dictionaries and you can consider each of the dictionary as a single individual. And the second element has a key of video and it contains a string Python tutorial as a value. So let us first try to access the value of this element that has a key of individuals. So in order for us to actually access that all we have to do is first refer to the dict1 which is the variable and then square bracket and specify the key of this element which is the individual so I can just put string individual and if I just run it then you will see the value coming out that you see in here and also we can try to access this Python tutorial here by specifying the video as a key so in the next line I can do print dict1 square bracket video and if I run it, then you will see a Python tutorial as a result because you specify the key as a video for this element. So now the next step for us is to see how we can access the value of an element that sits within the list here. So for example, let's say that I want to access the value of this element that has a key of a last name. So what we can do here is that we first gonna point to this list and then we're gonna point to this first dictionary and then we will specify the key of a last name to get the value of O. So let me show you an example there. So we can do print dict1 square bracket and individuals so by printing the individuals here we are now at this list here now we have to actually specify the index of the list because the dictionary here is within the list we have to use the list indexing and since we want to actually access the first element within this list i'm gonna say the index of zero and then another square bracket and let's specify the last name here so i can just put a string last name and if i run this then you will see the last name o as the result in the console which is the value of an element that has a key of a last name okay so now let's talk about the get method from the dictionary class so we can actually use the get method to achieve the same result that we've done here so we can do a print dict one dot get so we are actually calling the get method from the dictionary class here and then we can specify the key here individual and so if I run this, then you will see the same result as calling this statement here. So we got the value of this list here. And also we can try to do the same thing for the video. We can do print dict1.get and video. And if I run it, then you will see a Python tutorial as well. And also we can try to do the same thing here. So we can do print dict1. So in this case, we first have to specify the nested dictionary that's within the list. So I'm going to say uh, individuals and then zero dot get last name so if i run this and you will see your last name o here as well so the main difference between this uh, square bracket method versus the get method is that in the square bracket method if you specify the key that does not exist in the dictionary then it will throw a key error while the get method even if you specify a key that does not exist it will throw a none instead of key error and the get method also have a different value here so in a case where the key does not exist it will throw that different value instead of a none so let me show you an example of that let me first comment this so in this print statement i have a key as an individual so so if I change this individual to individual and the key individual does not exist in the dict1 and if I try to run this, you will see a key error individual and this is an expected behavior because Python is trying to find the key of an individual that does not exist in the dict1. So now if I comment this and go to the get method and just uncomment this and just uh, change this individual to individual and if I just run this one more time then you will see a none instead of a key error and that's the main difference between this uh, square bracket method versus the get and also in here you can specify a different value so I can just say key does not exist and then just run it one more time then instead of none you will see a different value saying the key does not exist
Okay, so now let's try to talk about how we can add a new element into the dictionary. So I have a dict1 here, which have a two elements. So let's say that I want to add a new element into this dict1, and I want to actually call that as a new video. So what we can do there is that we can first reference the dict1, square bracket, and specify the new key that you want to create. So I'm going to say new video, and then set that equal to, for example, like JavaScript tutorial. And then if I print the dict1, and run it, then you will see the result here. And if you scroll to the right, then you will see a new element with a key of new video and value of JavaScript tutorial added to the dict1 variable. And we can also try to add a new element into the nested dictionary that we have here. So let's say that I want to add a new element into this uh, nested dictionary here. So then what we can do here is that we first gonna access this list and then we're gonna access this uh, dictionary which has the first index in this list. And then we will try to add a new element using the same syntax that we have here. So let me comment this and in here I can say uh, dict one and reference the individual and then another square bracket and specify the index of this dictionary which has the index of zero because this is the first one within this list and then i'm going to create another square bracket and specify the new key that you want to add so i'm going to say hobby and set that equal to programming and if I print the dict1 and run it, then you will see the result at the console. And if you scroll to the right, you see your first name Danny, last name O, and hobby as a programming coming out. So the element hobby was only added to the first dictionary, not to the second dictionary, because we actually pointed to the first index within this list here. So if you look at the second dictionary, you still see the first and last name, but no hobby. Okay, so now let's talk about how we can update the value of an existing element using the key. We will be following the similar syntax as the previous section where we are adding a new element into the existing dictionary. So let's say that I want to update the value of this list here. Currently this contains a two dictionary, but I want to make it as an empty list. Then what I can do here is that I will first refer to the dict1 and then uh, point to the individual and set that equal to an empty list. And then if I just print the dict1, and run it, then you will see an individual with an empty list. And I can also try to do the same thing for the video. So let me just copy this and paste it here. And video, and let me modify that to a JavaScript tutorial. Oops. And then run it then you will see a video with a JavaScript tutorial. And we can apply the same logic to update an element in this uh, nested dictionary here. So let's say that I want to update this value of O. So let me just first comment this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, refer to the dict1 and square bracket and point to the individual, which is the list here. And then I'm going to create another square bracket and point to the first index because I want to change this last name in this first index. And then another square bracket and point the last name and set that equal to new last name and if I just print the dict1 and run it then you will see an individual first name Danny and last name as the new last name here. So one thing to be careful here is that if you specify a key that exists in the dictionary it will actually work as an update but if you specify the key that does not exist so for example if I change this last name to last name x and then run this one more time then it will actually add a new element with a key of a last name x and value of a new last name. So if you check the result here you have a first name last name and last name x as the new New last name so it actually added a new element okay so now let's talk about how we can delete one or more elements in the dictionary so we have a three different methods from the dictionary class that we can actually use to delete one or more elements so let me go through them one by one so the first method that we're going to talk about is a pop so let me show you an example here so if i say dict one pop and then in this argument let's specify the key here so for example if i want to remove this element then i can just say specify the key as a video here and then if i print the dict one and run it then you will see the individual as is because we haven't actually removed it but if you scroll to the right then you will not see this element video here because it was removed and the pop method also returns the value of an element that's currently being removed so what we can do here is that we can actually set this as a removed item variable so remove the item equal to dict1 and if I just print uh, this item is being removed or actually this item is removed 
and then comma remove the item and if i just run this one more time then you will see that this item is removed and you will see the value python tutorial so it actually returns the value of an element that's currently being removed and we can also try to use the pop method in the nested dictionary that we have here so let's say that i want to actually remove the last name element here then let me first comment this and then i can just do a dict one square bracket individual and another square bracket with a zero so i'm pointing to the first dictionary here and i want to call the pop method and specify the key that you want to remove so in this case last name and so if i just print dict one and then just run this then you will see an individual with only the first name because the last name was removed by this pop method and the second method that we're going to talk about is the pop item so this method is somewhat similar to pop however the pop item only deletes the last element from the dictionary and it does not take any argument so let me show you an example here so i can do dict one pop item parenthesis and if i just print dict one and run it you will see an individual here because the individual is the first element so if you scroll to the right you will not see the video element because the video element was the last element and so that it was actually removed by the pop item method and similar to the pop method the pop item method also returns the item that's currently being removed but in this case it returns a tuple with both the key and value so let me set this as a removed item and then I set that equal to dick one the pop item and then if I just say print this item is removed comma removed item and if I just run this one more time then at the very top you will see this item is removed and a tuple with the first index specified as a key and then the second index as the value so this is a bit important to note here is that the pop item method actually returns a tuple and the first index will be always the key of an element that's being removed and then the second element will always be the value of the element that's being removed here okay so the last method that we can use to delete the elements from the dictionary is the clear method so as the name says it it actually clears out all the elements within the dictionary so i can just do a dict one dot clear and if I just print the dict one and run it, then you will see an empty dictionary here because all the elements in the dictionary was cleared out. And we can also call the clear method in the nested dictionary that we have here. So let me comment this and then I can do a dict one, a square bracket individual, and then the first index dot clear. So if I just print dict1 again and run it, you will see individuals and you will see an empty dictionary as the first element in this list because all the elements that we have here is being removed by the clear method. Okay, so we are getting close to the end here. We're going to talk about the LAM method and then the membership operator. So the LAM method counts the number of elements that you have in the dictionary. So we can do a print LAM dict1 and if you just run this you will see two because we have a two different elements in the dict1 and we can also call this lamp method in this uh, nested dictionary here so i can just do list one square bracket individual and point to the first dictionary and then if i run this one more time then you will see a two here as well because we have a two different elements in this uh, dictionary here so moving on to the membership operator so the membership operator checks whether the key exists in the dictionary so i can do print video in in dict1 and if i run this it's going to return true because the key video actually exists in the dict1 but if i put a new video here which does not exist in the dict1 and if you run it then it will return first because the key new video does not exist here so one thing to remember here is that the membership operator for dictionary only works for the key not for the value so if i just copy this value python tutorial and put it here and run this one more time it's gonna return first because it only searches for the key not for the value so if i put individuals here and run it then you will see true because the key individuals actually exist in the dict one okay guys that's it for this video we've talked about the dictionary and its basic operations i hope that this video was helpful in our next video we will build a simple program that allows us to create modify and delete elements from dictionary so please keep it tuned and if you haven't already subscribed please click the subscribe and like button thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in next videos